Hello, this is Catherine from Accelerated Reader, reading books for you. Today, I will be reading chapters 11 and 12 from Two Very Rare Bears by S.P. Bullock and G.S. Worth. Before I begin reading, I would like to give a big thanks to the authors for sending me this book to read on my channel. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Chapter 11 Back at Churchill's, Winnie Fred was ecstatic. The demand for the royal collection of Christmas doggy bears was huge. Children were captivated by the bears' cute little faces, and they were selling like hotcakes. Winnie Fred knew her Christmas bonus would be safe again. But George wasn't ecstatic. He was scared. At this rate, he knew he was going to be plucked from the pile of remaining doggy bears, and that would be it. He'd never see Harry again. At least in the toy department, hiding under the mounds of doggy bears, he felt safe. But he could hear the commotion above him as excited children plucked the Christmas doggy bears from the diminishing pile. The story of Churchill's losing half their soft toy stock after the Wang Shu had been hit by lightning had made the front pages of all the London newspapers and had made the bears even more desirable. Maybe even collector's items, thought some of the parents. It was a race against time. George was trapped and it was going to have to be Harry who came to his rescue. At the farm, the children were preparing for Christmas. Grandpa had put up a large tree in the farmhouse with the help from a local lad, Andy. Andy often helped David on the farm. He had become a little like the son David had never had. The children loved to see Andy. It amused them greatly that he wore shorts all year round. Even when a blanket of snow lay across the moors, Andy would still appear in his shorts. At first, James had worried he didn't have any other trousers, but Andy assured him that he did and that he just preferred to wear shorts. Not very short shorts, but sensible knee-length shorts with lots of pockets for the various bits and pieces. Andy liked to carry a ball of string, a snack or two which he usually fed to the alpacas, some lemon sherbets to which he was partial, and a collection of elastic bands, paper clips, and small change. Grandma was bringing boxes of Christmas decorations from the cellar with the help of Eva and Emily. Thomas, as usual, was up in his room engrossed in a book. Emily ran upstairs to tell Tom they were about to decorate the tree, but Tom said to go ahead without him. Grandma and Grandpa had become concerned that Tom was becoming quite reclusive. He was spending more and more time alone with his books. But recently, Tom felt more alive when lost between the pages of his latest adventures than he did at any other time. Harry sat motionless, on Tom's bed watching him. He just wanted to find George so badly. He just had to find a way back to Churchill's. The cold December rain lashed against the window. Harry became sadder and sadder thinking about George. He had lost his brother and he could do nothing about it. His little brown eyes began to well up with tears. Just then, Tom reached over and picked Harry up. Staring straight at him, he said, I think we better go help the others decorate the tree. But as he looked at the little bear, he suddenly noticed the left hand side of Harry's face was wet. Tom thought somehow the rain had got through the window, but no, the window was firmly shut. Tom picked the bear up with both hands and brought him directly in front of his face. Why, you look like you've been crying, little bear, said Tom. All of a sudden, Tom saw a tear stream down Harry's right-hand cheek, and then another. 
Oh my gosh, you're, you're crying, said Tom. Tom dropped Harry onto the bed in shock. You're crying, but you're a toy. I'm seeing things. I must be tired, said Tom. He couldn't believe what was happening. No, you're not seeing things. I'm alive and I need your help, Harry blurted out through his tears. Harry was clambering up onto Tom's chair now. Tom was rubbing his eyes in disbelief. A talking bear? This is crazy, thought Tom. Grandma and Grandpa are right. I'm going mad up here. I've read too many books. I'm imagining things. But Harry wouldn't stop and carried on trying to explain everything as fast as he could. His journey on the ship, the department store called Churchill's, being plucked from a basket in the toy department, and his dear brother George, whom he hoped would still be there waiting for him. Tom sat open mouthed in disbelief. Okay, okay, calm down, he finally said, picking Harry up and placing him on the desk in front of him. So to have another good look, and made sure he wasn't imagining things. This is a lot to take in. You're a talking doggy bear, called Harry, who has arrived in a Christmas hamper, and now you want to go back to Churchill's department store because you have a brother called George, who is also alive and is waiting there for you. Right, said Harry. Could we go now, please? No, we can't go now, said Tom. Churchill's is 200 miles away in London, and how would we get there? Oh dear, oh dear, said Harry. We must get there. Tom shook his head, thinking he must be dreaming. Just then, there was a knock on Tom's door, and Ava stuck her head around. Who are you talking to? said Ava. No one, said Tom. No one at all. Are you okay, Tom? said Ava. Grandma and Grandpa are worried. They think you spend far too much time in your room alone. I'm fine, said Tom. I just like reading my books and making my models. I can't run around like you and the others. So I go to places in my mind and in my books. Oh, Thomas, said Ava. As she walked over, and gave him a big hug. Maybe one day we can all have an adventure together, just like in one of your books. But right now, please, let's go down and finish decorating the tree with the others. Okay, I'll be down in five minutes, said Tom. When Ava had left the room, Tom quickly turned back to Harry and whispered, Okay, please tell me I've not just imagined the last 10 minutes. No, said Harry, you're not. Tom couldn't believe what was happening. You're the one who's been moving things for me, aren't you? He said to Harry. Yes, said Harry. I just wanted to help. Tom laughed. That's amazing. Okay, said Tom. We've got to keep you a secret until I can figure out what we're going to do. Harry, you've got to stay here in my room while I go and help my family complete the Christmas decorations. Don't move at all until I get back. I'll think of a way to help you. Help, thought Harry. Help, the very word he had been longing to hear. Someone was actually going to help him find his brother George. Tom left his room, closed the door, and took the lift downstairs. He entered the sitting room just as the others were putting the final touches to the tree. Hey, Tom, said Grandpa, you're just in time to turn on those lights. Tom smiled and flipped the switch, while the others all cheered and gasped at the tree. All Tom could think about was Harry upstairs in his room, and whatever he was going to do with his talking, walking real-life doggy bear. 
It seemed that the adventure Tom had longed for was about to happen right here in his own home. That night, Tom and Harry talked into the early hours while the rest of the house slept. Tom listened as Harry told him of his adventure, how the Wang Shu was hit by lightning in the terrible storm, how somehow he and George had been brought to life with bright pink light glowing from their chests. Then the journey to Churchill's and how Winnie Fred Draycott had plucked him from the pile of bears and put him in a Christmas hamper. Tom sat quietly while Harry finished his story. Then he got a pen and pad from his desk so Harry could draw a map of the toy department as he remembered it and exactly where he had left George. Tom recalled the words of his grandfather. Tom, preparation is 50% of the job. And if they were going to find George, they needed to prepare with a proper plan. Chapter 12. Eva couldn't sleep. She looked at the time, 4.30 a.m. The rain was still lashing at the window. Since the accident, she often had trouble sleeping. She decided to go downstairs and get a glass of milk, as this usually helped. She quietly opened her bedroom door as the rest of her family were asleep and crept down the hallway. First, past James' room, she smiled as she heard him softly snoring. Then, past Emily's room, which was silent. But, as she approached Tom's room, she could hear talking. She thought Tom was talking in his sleep. But as she listened, she heard another voice. That's odd, thought Eva. Who's Tom talking to at this time of night? Intrigued, she put her ear to Tom's door, but she accidentally leaned a little too far and the door swung open, making a loud creaking sound. Tom and Harry became silent as Eva gasped at what she saw. The little brown doggy bear that usually lie lifeless on his bed was now stood up holding a pen and drawing on a notepad on Tom's desk. All three of them were silent, staring at each other. Eva thought she was dreaming. She tightly closed her eyes before reopening them, expecting to see a different scene. But no, it was exactly the same and Tom was gesturing for Eva to close the door. I can explain, whispered Tom. Come in and close the door. Eva did as Tom asked and walked over to them. She was in a daze. How can this be, said Eva, shocked at what she was seeing. It's a long story, said Tom. Eva, meet Harry. Harry, this is my oldest sister, Eva. Pleased to meet you, said Harry. Are you going to help too? Help? Help with what? said Eva, scarcely believing she was actually talking to a toy. Is this a joke, Tom? No, Eva. Harry is real. He's been brought to life somehow by an electrical storm, and he needs to get back to his brother in London, said Tom. Eva sat staring at Harry in disbelief while Harry told her the whole story. Eva was mesmerized. She was actually talking to a doggy bear. You're the secret helper, said Eva, smiling. Yes, it was Harry, said Tom. He was helping me by bringing things within my reach, said Tom. He's amazing, said Eva, stroking Harry's little head softly. Harry then showed Eva the floor plan for Churchill's toy department where he had left George. Eva studied it carefully, still in disbelief. I just need to get to Churchill's, said Harry, before it's too late. Tom looked up at Eva. It's impossible, said Tom. It's 200 miles away in London. Eva thought for a minute, and then a big grin appeared on her face. Auntie Maggie, she said, that's it. We can ask Grandma if we can visit Auntie Maggie. Who is Auntie Maggie? 
said Harry. Auntie Maggie is our auntie, said Tom. She lives in London, and she's the one who sent the hamper. She loves Churchill's, said Eva, still not sure that she wasn't dreaming. That's a great idea, said Harry. We just need to persuade Grandpa and Grandma, said Tom, as we can't travel to London alone. Okay, that's decided, said Eva, but right now we better get back to bed before everyone wakes up. Meanwhile, back in Churchill's, George was feeling very concerned. He was at the bottom of the basket he'd been placed in, and he's estimated there were only about a hundred or so doggy bears left on top of him. He kept burrowing his way to the bottom of the pile, but time was running out. I've got to do something, he thought, before I plucked away from this basket and whisked away like Harry. Poor George didn't have a clue of Harry's whereabouts, but he was certain of one thing, that Harry would come back for him. Then it came to him, he needed to hide away from the other bears. And there was his answer. The magnificent Christmas tree in the center of the toy department he and Harry had climbed together on the first night. Its thick, dense pine needles would make the perfect hideout until Harry came back for him. Yes, he would take refuge in the tree. So that night, he waited until the shop floor fell silent. The lights were dimmed and the cleaners had left for the night. Before he climbed out and scampered up the 20-foot high tree, he buried himself deep into the foliage climbing carefully over baubles and Christmas lights until he found the perfect branch where he could see the shop floor, but nobody could see him. And now for the first time since Harry had left him, he felt safe. Stay tuned for chapter 13 and 14. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. In the description below, I've included links where you may find and purchase this book.